What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode with me, Tyson the Trainer. I am feeling amped. I am feeling over caffeinated. Made a mistake, I think. I had caffeine. Oh, I'm going to make an assumption. I had caffeine at 11.45 today. It was my third shot of coffee and I'm like, mm, do I want to have it? I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to have it. Most likely going to be a rookie error. Potentially might ruin my sleep, but you know what? We can't always be perfect, okay? And this is what I want to talk to you guys today about this perfection that you're always chasing and to help you kind of change that and have that day one mentality, all right? So what I mean by the day one mentality is every day you get an opportunity in order to move yourself in the direction you want to go, okay? Like whatever you want to do, not just in fitness, but anywhere. Like, you know, if you're trying to climb your career ladder, today you're going to show up to work and do a good job or are you going to do a shit job because of yesterday? Coming to fitness, if you had a shit day of food yesterday, you know, you have today to either keep going and make progress or you use yesterday to kind of, you know, decide what you're going to do today where he's like, oh, I feel like shit, I overrate, I might as well start again Monday or whatever it is. And instead, we want to go into that day one mentality. Now, the reason you want to always start with a day one mentality is because that way it's always a clean slate, okay? Even if you did a fucking amazing job yesterday, every day is a day one mentality, what we're trying to do here is disassociate from what happened yesterday, whether it was a good or a bad day, because it's not. it doesn't matter what happened yesterday. If it was a great day, awesome. If it was a bad day, it, okay, it's shit. But what usually happens is if it was a good day, we use that as motivation, which is great, and we keep wanting going with that momentum. But if we had a bad day, it's very easy to get sucked into this fucking trap where you're like, all right, you know, I ate like shit. It's time to get back on track or whatever it's going to be. And then you try and play like a catch up, you know, you try and under eat, you try and over exercise. You're scared. Oh yeah, no, I've gained this weight. I have to undo what I just did. And it's like, you can't do that to yourself. You can't keep thinking, I need to play catch up. I need to now get to here. Oh, because of this, now I have to do X. You're not in a race. Okay, health and fitness and being fucking healthy and in a good weight range and all those type of things, it is an ongoing thing, okay? There is no finish line. There is no having to run as fast as you can, okay? It is a marathon. You got to set a pace and you got to be consistent with that. And guess what? Even the marathon, your your one kilometer uh, run time is not going to be bang on every single kilometer, okay? You are not going to hit Five minutes for every single kilometer. If you're doing five minute Ks at a marathon, fucking respect you. That is solid. But you know what I'm saying here. You're not going to be exactly on the mark each time. Sometimes that kilometer might be a little bit slower because you might be going slightly uphill. Sometimes it might be a bit faster because you're going downhill. Okay? This is what a marathon... Like, this is it. Like, things happen. Okay? Like, life is not a fucking... Uh, what am I trying to think of here? Life is not a, a test tube. That's not the word I'm trying to think of. It's not in a controlled environment, all right? You cannot fucking sit in a box that I'm in here right now. I'm in my bedroom with my Harry Potter books behind me. You cannot just be like, everything's controlled right now. Nothing's going to get in my way. Shit happens. And what you can't let shit happening affect you, you can't let it affect you today, all right? Because if you wake up and you're like, all right, yesterday I overate. I was on track with my weight loss. Now I am not on track whatever the fuck that means. I was in a deficit, now I'm not in a deficit. Oh, it's Wednesday. I have to quickly get in a deficit for the rest of the week. Today, I'm only going to eat 500 calories. Well, that's not the fucking right thing to do. Today, I'm going to try and exercise more to undo what I did yesterday. All these bad behaviors that are not going to serve you for the long term. They're all fucked behaviors. No one wants to talk about it. No one wants to be like, hey, this is actually a she behavior you're doing. Because everyone on fucking Instagram, everyone's like, oh my God. You know, like they followed all the fucking, the comp preppers and they do that shit. Because a comp prepper has a certain timeline, all right? They've got to get lean by this point. Usually it's 16 weeks or 12 weeks, whatever the fuck they do. So if they overeat one day or whatever they have to do, they have to fucking make up for it because they are on a timeline, all right? If you are someone who is following them, and you are trying to compete, then don't fucking listen to the words I'm saying, okay? Turn me off. Please don't listen to me. Because I'm not here to talk about those people. I'm here to talk about you, who is a normal person, who wants to look good, who wants to feel good, who wants to lose a little bit of weight, who wants to have some muscle tone, who doesn't want to fucking be neurotic about every little thing, yet that's who you follow. You follow all these people, and you're like, oh yeah, I need to do what they're doing. These people are not you. These people are fucking crazy, okay? Like, 
I don't like for, to, for me having that much control. Like I, I just look at it from my food, from where I came from with my disordered eating. And it's just funny because like all of my, a lot of my disordered eating, I look at what bodybuilders do and I'm like, mm, that's pretty fucked up. That's kind of similar to what I was doing, but it's glorified. It's normal. It's all these things that they're doing because it's in this competition saying that's what you got to do. And look at the end of the day, it is what you've got to do, but that's not to say that it's not a fucking good thing. So let's put them aside. You know, they can do that. If they want to do that, great. Let them fucking do it. You're not here to do that shit, which means if you fall off track, there's no making up for it tomorrow, okay? If you want to build such a good relationship with your food, if you want to stop falling off track, if you want to stop struggling with the overeating side of things, the binge restrict cycle, you do not let what happened yesterday dictate what happens today, okay? If you overate yesterday, you do not allow that. You do not allow that to affect today. You do not overeat. Undereat, I should say, sorry. You do not undereat the following day. You do not go into a fuck it mentality and start again Monday. You do not now try and do fucking three hours of exercise, okay? Any of these compensatory things you're trying to do is going to negatively affect you in the future because yeah, I can guarantee you've experienced this before. You have one day where it's a bit of a blowout or it's a big blowout. The next day you feel like shit, so you try and restrict. You're not hungry for breakfast. You know, you're like, oh, I'll try and see how long I can hold off. Then you have like a little bit of a lunch and then you're like, oh yeah, it's pretty good. You know, I'm still not hungry. So you kind of under eat at dinner time. You do a little bit of starving side of things. You're probably doing more activity. And then you're like, all right, now I feel good. It's fine. And then the next day you wake up and you're fucking ravenous. Or you make it to that second night after trying to restrict and you're not fucking overeating. You do not want to fall into that pattern. And the way we avoid falling into that is playing the day one mentality or day zero, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Where it's like, if you overate yesterday, that's yesterday. You get back on track today, okay? You eat regularly. Now, in saying this, if you are actually full because you did eat a lot of food, let's say the day before, if you're genuinely full, then you've still got to eat. You just don't want to force feed yourself, all right? So it's like maybe if you usually have breakfast and you wake up full, have a protein shake, okay? At lunchtime, it's like have a little lunch if you're still full compared to a normal size lunch. So I'm still trying to get you eating at the regular times you usually do because we're not trying to throw your body out of whack here. And again, we don't want to force feed you because the biggest thing you've got to kind of understand is are you still hungry or are you actually not? Again, some people when they overeat the day after, they're not hungry, which is fine. Like I just said, have smaller meals and have smaller portions, keep that regularity. But if you are not hungry, sorry, if you are hungry, eat regularly. Don't try and restrict this bullshit. Don't do that, okay? It's not good for you. It is going to fuck your relationship up with your food. And just like a health, like it's not a healthy behavior to do. Do you notice normal people who overeat the next day, they go, I'm not eating anything. I'm going to go and exercise more. They're just like, no, they wouldn't even bring up the fucking subject because they just kind of, they pay attention to their hunger and they just get on with it the next day. You know, like my parents, when I went back to see my family um, for my brother's 21st, we had a big dinner. It was a fucking feast. We went to this uh, pub, got a big, you know, it was fucking great. <coughs> Pardon me. Everyone ate too much. Had way too much cake. It is what it is. You know, what's funny. There's a difference when I look at my family. They're not like, they're not uh, overweight. They're not underweight. They're mostly in a weight neutral range, I would say. They could lose two to five kilos, you know, to be in a healthy range. But funnily enough, when everyone's full, they just stop eating. Oh, I'm full. Like I'm stuffed. Whereas like someone like myself, because of where I came from, like, you know, my background with the overeating side of things, I can just keep pushing past the, the signs of fullness. Like I can be stuffed and I'm like, I had this, emotional drive to want to keep eating, whereas they're able to stop themselves, right? I am obviously able to do that now. So I stopped because I was full, okay? The next day, I get up, I do my regular exercise, I get up in the morning. My dad's not getting up because he's like, oh, fuck, I ate too much cake last night. Let's go for a run together. No, he's just going about his day, doing his normal thing. He has his coffee and then he gets on with it. You know, same as my mum. They know they ate extra, but there's no lingering guilt. They're not like, oh, fuck, man, i got to go and do this. i got to undo everything. Like, they ate less the next day because they weren't as hungry, but they still ate. And it's just like, I just paid attention to their behaviors because I'm like, haha, this is what normal people do. And we need to apply that. Because you can learn a lot of things from normal people, which is good. You know, there's obviously good and bad stuff. You don't want to be a normal person. 
right? You don't want to be someone who doesn't exercise. You don't want to be someone who fucking, you know, eats shit all the time. You don't want to be someone who has no ambition to be healthy for the long term. Because unfortunately, normal people don't eat enough vegetables, right? Don't eat enough protein, don't eat enough fruit, don't exercise enough. We don't want to be that, but some of their habits are really good to learn from and to pay attention to, like hunger cues, like regularity with their meals, like knowing when to eat to, when they've got to stop eating, like getting on with their life when they do overeat. Because these people, they don't think, they don't second guess it. It's only because you've moved into this fucking health industry and that you've got this little bit of obsession with food, which is true. If we're always thinking about it, it is a bit of an obsession to where we've now, you know, you're trying to compensate for it. So we want to apply the day one strategy where you just get back on track, all right? If you have a little bit more energy and you have time to go and exercise more, you can do it. But there's a difference between forcing yourself to go and do it and thinking you have to and burn it off compared to just having a little bit more energy where you might do a few extra thousand steps or you might push a little bit harder in the gym. These are the differentiators, okay, to pay attention to it, right? And if you can continue on like things are normal, you will notice that there's no binge restrict cycle. You just get back on track with it. And funnily enough, anyone who's obsessing about, oh, no, nah, like that's all my calorie deficit or oh, I fucked it up for the week. You don't fuck it up for the week if you just continue getting on with it. Just because the body is adaptable, okay? Sure, you might not lose as much weight as you wanted to this week, but like, fuck, what? Now what? It doesn't matter. It's a fucking week. Again, there's no race. There's no deadline. I know you're impatient and I know you want to fucking lose weight as fast as possible. I understand that. We all do. You know, I'm... All these things I talk to you guys about is from experience. You you understand that, right? I just got to live this shit a lot earlier than you guys. Like I started this shit at 16 um, and my struggles went up until 22. So like six years of struggles and mentality to be able to learn and teach this to you guys so you don't have to go through this stuff. But also it's quite good because I'm aware and I can identify these behaviors in you, in clients and how to work around them just because I've lived them and experienced them, Right? And so when you get on with it and you don't compensate and there's no rush to get to the finish line, you'll realize that it actually becomes a lot easier to keep moving on with life and you become more consistent when you get on with it. You become more consistent because you're not letting yesterday dread over you or again, trying to overcompensate that then leads to undercompensation that then leads to throwing you off. It's just like you get on with life. It's day one or it's day zero again. And the more you start to apply that, you don't give that food power. You're like, oh man, I can't believe the fuck up I did yesterday. Oh, yeah, it's just no good. Like, you just get on with life, right? You just get on with it. And you don't kick yourself when you're down. And you don't fucking yell at yourself. Just like I say, you wouldn't you wouldn't say this to a family member if they're trying to die. If they overate yesterday, you're not going to fucking go and punch them and yell at them and tell them they're a piece of shit. So you do the same thing to yourself. You don't do that shit. You get on with it. You practice forgiveness. And also, if you were to say, you know, if, if someone's going to learn a lesson, do you, would you ask them to reflect on what happened to think about how they can avoid it in the future? Because I guarantee you, if you make a mistake at work, it's your boss is like, look, you fucked up. Here's what you got to do next time. All right? If you keep making the same mistake, the boss is going to pull you up and be like, what's going on here? What do you keep making this for? Why do you keep doing this? We've talked about this before. You know, is it an education thing? Is it an ignorance thing? What's going on? Because it's like, you know, you're human. You can make a mistake. But if you keep making it, it's like something's missing here. Are you not learning from it? And if you're not learning from it, then that's that's a choice that you're making to continue keep making that mistake. Right? It's not a mistake anymore. It's a choice. And that's the difference. So you can learn from what happened yesterday. You don't, you're like, all right, next time I know I need to be making sure I'm going to eat at 3 p.m. in the afternoon so I'm not going all day hungry from lunch until dinner and then I'm overeating. And if I try and have this snack, I know I'm going to stay on track. And if you know that you need to have a snack at 3 p.m., but every day you keep fucking making excuses because you're focused on calories and you keep overeating, then it's no longer a mistake you're making. It's a choice you're making. And then you're self-sabotaging yourself, right? If you know that you need to be getting to bed so you can get at least seven hours of sleep, and every night you keep, you're like, oh man, I'm so tired. I need to go to bed early tonight. And then you get caught up watching Netflix, staying on the phone, whatever it's going to be. That is not a mistake you're making anymore. That is a choice you're making. And then again, you're, 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 you're to blame, right? You have to take acceptance that you're now making the choice. It's not a mistake. It's a permanent thing that you're doing and you aren't learning from it. 
Again, it's the same situation. Your boss will forgive you once, fool me once, shame on you, fool you twice, shame on me, fool me three times, like, fuck, man, what are you doing, basically, right? Learn. Learn from what happens. And, like, learn to question yourself, too. Think about this. I've talked about this in other podcasts. Think about what has led to that point that threw you off, and then it's like, you make a plan for next time, you write it out, and then you get on with life, and you get back into doing exactly what you were doing. Because if every time you can keep treating it like a day one mentality and keep getting on track, then again, there's no catching up, there's no race, there's no whatever it is. And funnily enough, the more you do that, like I said, not only will you be consistent, but you'll also realize, because a lot of you only use the fucking scale as a metric, that your scale weight by the end of the week isn't going to be a huge jump up. Will it go up the next day if you overrate? Yes. Does that mean you gain body fat? No. Does it mean you undid everything? No. You just get on with it. And you're going to realize these slight, you know, once every three weeks, let's say, it's a bit of a setback with what you do. If out of 21 days, three weeks, you have one setback, do you think you've undone three weeks of hard work? No. Yeah, people have this mentality. Oh, one day I'm going backwards. Or it's like people go overseas. Oh, it's away for two weeks. You know, am I going to lose everything? It would be a fucking shame. It would be, a, not a shame. It would be absolutely pointless to do anything if you can lose everything you've worked hard for within a few weeks. Years of effort or months of effort, let's say, lost in a week or two. Like, fuck, man. Humans would definitely be dead by now if that was the case. Okay, so you're not going to undo all your hard work. But at the end of the day, it's like you have to just take that out of your head and you have to keep moving forward. You have to keep focusing on what you can do today to keep on track to what do you have to do. And if you don't, if you don't, if you have that day one mentality, it, it also doesn't put you in fuck it mode. Because like I say, you just get on with it the next meal, the next day, the next wherever it's going to be. You don't go, oh, well, you know, it's Thursday and I stuffed up yesterday or Wednesday. Is there really a point of me sticking to it for the next three days? Yes, there is. Because one day is not going to ruin all of your progress. And you have to show yourself that. The clients, my clients' mentality that have changed because of this and showing them. And they look at their measurements the end of the week. They go, oh, I didn't actually ruin my progress. And I'm like, yes. Because I can tell you this, but until you actually apply it to yourself and you measure the outcome, not with your fucking scale weight, but with your measurements, you will see that I am right. That it's not going to undo everything. And again, if one day out of 21 days, if you think that one day is going to fucking throw off three weeks of consistency, well then literally what is the point in trying? If you think you have to be perfect, which I never fucking say, it's consistency over perfection, but you still try and think, oh, it has to be every day I'm on point. Otherwise, there's no, you know, what's, it's just pointless. It's, it's all or nothing mentality. Then you're never going to fucking get anywhere in life. You're going to keep spinning your wheels again and again. So you have to change that. Right, And to change, you've got to change. You've got to do something different. Do the day one mentality like I talked to you about. Every fucking day, you just start from zero. And if something sets you back, you learn from it. You write it down. What did I learn from this? How do I avoid it next time? What am I going to do going forward? And you apply it. Because also the thing is, where it's like, I did so good yesterday. Yeah, it's like a little bit of motivation, but you're like, well, you got to show up today. Like yesterday's effort doesn't affect today's effort, Right? You're like, oh yeah, but I worked really hard yesterday. It's like, imagine going to work today and you say to your boss, yeah, but I, <laughs> I worked eight hours yesterday. Your boss is like, okay, you're still going to fucking work eight hours today. Oh yeah, no, no, but I worked eight hours and they were pretty hard yesterday. It's like, okay. Or well, I worked a really hard week last week. I'm just going to take it easy this week. Your boss would be like, no, we have a deadline. Oh yeah, no, nah, but um, no, nah, it was really like, I worked it hard. Like you, you know, it doesn't work anywhere else and it's not going to work here too, right? You can't just slack off because it's like, uh, the mentality that I like to think about is like the rent is due every day, right? Every day you have to pay your rent. In order to be healthy, you got to eat right every fucking day. You can't be like, yeah, but I ate healthy for a year. Okay. What does that have to fucking do with anything? You know, you have to do it every fucking day. The rent is due. And it's like three things. Fitness, with whatever that's going to be. Steps and nutrition. Four things. And sleep. That's what you've got to focus on, right? And it's just this ongoing thing. And if you take the pressure off yourself, thinking you have to play catch up, thinking you have to get ahead, thinking you're falling behind, if you, if you just wipe that and you think about every day, just a day one, it's like just how many ticks can you get in a row? How consistent can you be? Because now there's no pressure. There's no timeline. There's no deadline. There's no rushing. There's no catching up because you don't have to do any of those things. It's just about showing up for yourself every fucking day and not letting yesterday affect what you're going to do today. And you just want to, in a way, every day, day one.
day one, day one. See how many day ones you can get in a row. Cool? So, that is the podcast. If you enjoyed it, I would appreciate it if you could share it on Instagram and give me a tag. And don't forget, if you are interested in online coaching, make sure to click the link in the description and we can organize time to have a call and I can show you how I help clients achieve fucking good results and are able to keep it and not hate their life by being able to enjoy foods they love and training that is actually beneficial to them and not just some bullshit training they're going to give everyone else. So click the link in the description if you're interested in coaching and I'll speak to you guys next time.